go. Good afternoon. I hope you are well. Thank you for joining me on a Friday at five. It is so nice to have you with me, have you join me. Um, and I hope you are ready for another productive session of accounting. So let's go. Just for those who have just joined, you are so very welcome to the newcomers and as well as to the usuals. Thank you so much um, for attending my class or watching it on YouTube, wherever you feel um, works for you best. Just a bit about me, so I'll be your grade 12 accounting tutor and my name is Shante. You are in very capable hands. Um, I am currently teaching grade 12s, I'm teaching grade 11s, grade 10s in accounting, um, some grade 9 EMS as well. So um, I know when it comes to schooling, I have um, all the background needed and then I love accounting so much that I actually went and before my PGCE I went and studied accounting. So um, I think it helps me a lot and it assists me as a teacher and um, not only for you guys who might want to go and study accounting but also for those of you who just wants to pass accounting um, or wants to get a distinction out of accounting I will help you and try and help you to get a broader sense and a broader understanding of what you need to know. Because as we all know, accounting is more of a um, do as much as you can exercises instead of making summaries. So that's why I feel I am here as your tutor or your teacher, as well as a mentor to make sure that you get a sufficient summaries from me, you get a good explanation, you understand the principles. So no matter what gets asked, no matter what I throw at you, no matter what that um, year end exam throws at you, the June exam, if you understand the concept, I am sure you will succeed in accounting. So what will we, we what will we be doing today? We will do inventory, some fixed assets and some internal controls. Now we've already looked at fixed assets, so we won't go through the nitty gritty notes, the how to work out depreciation, um, how to account for it in a general journal, in a general ledger. We've already done that, okay? So we've already seen that. Now I want to introduce some new things to you. So I want to, I asked my students this and none of them could get it right because everyone was so um, caught off guard is the word I'm looking for, was so caught off guard to say, listen here, yeah, but um, what 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 do you ask me? What do you want me to do, ma'am? I'm not sure what you're asking me to do. And when I calmed them down and I explained the concept, they were like, oh, this is easy. And they got full marks for this um, question that I asked them. So I want to introduce it to you as well so that you can see another way I can test um, fixed assets. So throwing in a little, I call it a level four question. I know in maths, you also have a level question, a level four question. And in accounting, it's also very popular to have a level four question. So then we're going to complete inventory today. I've introduced um, the first in first out method to you guys. And I've also now said there's a weighted average um, method and we are going to do that today. So I'm quickly going to explain that before we go on to the fixed asset question and then we're going to move over to our internal control. So I found some nice articles on the internet and um, things I've read through and find applicable. Um, I'll also say what you might be able to to what they might able, what they might ask you um, or how you need to think in order to answer these questions. OK, just some admin from my side. So we have changed from Zoom onto Google Microsoft Teams and um, we now send a link to your personal email when you register with us so that you can join me every day from five to six have thing this lovely accounting. Just take note that we will not have a session on Monday and we will not have a session 
next week Friday as these are public holidays. OK, so you can rest some bit, um, relax a bit. Use that time to catch up on some extra work. So for those of you who can uh, know people who can also benefit from these classes, I want you to motivate them to go and register their email at www.africateamgeeks.co.za and also go and follow us on social media, please, at Africa Team Geeks. So that means all our um, admin is done and we can move on to our inventory theory. OK, so yesterday, let's just recap. What did we do yesterday for those who has just joined? So I introduced um, three, four, actually four methods, but we don't get tested on the, the last, the last in first out method. I introduced to you three examinable, examinable methods. The one is specific identification method. The other one is the weighted average method. And then I explained to you the first in first out method. So yesterday, yesterday we said, OK, the specific identification method won't get asked. Why? It won't get asked because it's what you've been tested throughout your accounting career, I could say um, almost from grade nine to grade 10 to grade 11. So we've tested this as as teachers, um, as uh, your facilitators of education, we've already tested you um, in this specific identification mode. So the example I, I said, I said, OK, have a look and we're going to say it's like a garage. So we have um, 30 cars sold in a garage and each one of them have a different cost price. So it has a specific cost price to this asset and then they have a specific selling price. So when the one vehicle gets sold, I can just uh, account for the sale and I can account for this cost of sale at that specific cost price amount, the specific price I bought it. Um, on the day I bought it. OK, and the value. Now then we moved over yesterday to the first in first out method. I showed you how it works, what is important. So what column columns are important to incorporate? We need a purchase and a bought column. We need a cost of sales column and we need a balance. Um, a balance column. Then we want our quantities to show, we want our price to show, and we also want our amount to show. That's important. Okay. Then we also remember the theory that we learned yesterday. It said that usually the last units that we have, so the closing balance, the stock closing balance, will usually be multiplied by the price of the item I bought last. So here the last item we bought for stock was at eight rand and here we said that, but then we worked through it. You can go on YouTube, you can find that lesson and you can see how we worked through this to see, okay, this whole calculation is basically just to be sure what my closing stock balance is, the 360 rand. So this is all I did. I basically just said, OK, I did this whole calculation to see this is my closing stock balance. The first in first out method, I can wake you up in the middle of any night, any day, and I can ask you, listen here, what is the value of our closing balance? And you would be able to tell me. When we go to our weighted average method, it's a bit harder, but I like working with this method because it's um, it's fun. It's something different. It makes sense and it's not as much work. OK, like in the first in first out method. So there is a difference between the first and first out method on how we how we do our returns. OK, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm first going to explain the weighted average method and then I'm going to show you. OK, wait, let's look at my returns and how they differentiate between the two um, methods. OK, so let's go through this method very slowly. It says. This method is different. 
from the first in first out method because it assumes that the stock is valued at its weighted average price. OK, suppose we had the following transactions for March. So we have stock on hand. We have a thousand units at 20 Rand per unit. Then we purchased 400 units at a unit price of 22 Rand. Then we purchased another 900 units at a price of 22 Rand 50. Now we have our sales amount of 2000 thousand units we sold our to we sold 2000 units and we returned 80 units to the supplier on the 5th of March okay so yeah it's very important before I go on they say our first step is then to deal with the returns so we need to immediately to see, say okay on the 5th of March, I bought 900 units. So what am I going to do? I'm going to immediately deduct my 80 units from these 90 units. So I have 820 units. OK, that is what I'm going to take into account. Can you see? But I'm going to immediately do it and you'll see now why. I'm going to take it into account on the 5th and not on the 27th when I actually returned the units. OK, so let me repeat that. When I'm at the weighted average method, what I do is I do not take the units I return to my supplier in account on the 27th. I'm taking it into account directly on the 5th. OK, because you'll remember that the weighted average method only gets. Um, you only work it out every time when you buy new stock. OK, so what why i'm saying it's so important is have a look here with our first in first out method it says the 27th returned to supplier 15 units now can you see that i can then take into account on the 27th only i can take into account that i returned 15 items can you see that where here on the 27th i returned eight units but i'm taking it into account on the fifth okay so that's important for you to know so how does my blocky look now for the weighted average method can you see there's a lot there's a there's a big difference between the two between the two so i say okay on the first of march i had how many units on hand i had a thousand units on hand at a price of 20 rand so can you see my total will then be so my opening balance my opening stock value would then be 20 20 000 rand now when I look at the third i now purchased 400 units at a unit price of 22 rand per unit okay so let me repeat that again 400 units on the third at 22 rand per unit. Now here's the trick. With the weighted average method, every time I buy new stock, I have to work out a new stock value. Okay, how do I do that? I want you to take, let's take, let's do it together. So I want you to take your opening um, stock value take your opening stock value of 20,000 rand y number of units okay 100 a uh, 1000 times 20 rand per unit so that gives me a total amount of 20,000 rand right and now on the third i purchased additional 400 units at a unit price of 22 rand so that gives me a total of 8,800 rand. So in total, I then paid 8,800 rand. So to get my new weighted average cost price of my inventory, all I do is I take my total and I divide it by my 1,400 units. How did I get 1,400 units? I said 1,000 plus 400 because I'm taking my two. 20,000 and my 8,800 Rand into account. Can you see? So I have to take my 1,000 units at 20 Rand into account and my 400 units at 22 Rand. And that will give me a stock value 
of 20 rand and 57 cents. Okay, so that's how you work that out. Now I'm going to, we'll, we'll go, come back when we make another purchase. So here on the fifth, you can see, oh, okay, what did I do? I made another purchase. Okay, so I said, remember that 900 units I purchased? I'm going to deduct 80 units from there. Why? Because I returned 80 units that I bought on the 5th of March to my supplier. So therefore, in essence, I actually only have 820 units of the purchase um, I made on the 5th of February. Or was it the 5th of March? The 5th of March. Okay. So they say, okay, the unit price there was 22 Rand 50. So I basically say, okay, I have 820 new units. I bought it at a price of 22 Rand 50. So what would my amount then be? It would amount to 18,450 Rand, right? So now my closing balance, because now I'm at the year in my closing balance, at year end, I have a closing balance of 47250. So this is literally just my closing balance. I didn't have to work anything out like I had to do with the um, first in first out method. Oops. I just ha I had the total here, yeah? right? So we look at the first in first out method difference. So here I had my unit price. But I didn't have my total price where with my weighted average method, I have my total price, but I don't have my price per unit. OK, so I have my total price and I have my am amount, so my number of units. OK, now I want to work out what is my price per unit. This is very easy. All you do is you go say my total. How did I get my total? Exactly like we did here. We said our two. 20,000 plus our 8,800, so that's going to give me 28,800 plus 18,450. Okay, and I'm going to divide this by the 2220, so the 2,220 2, units that I have at year end. So this is going to give me a stock value of 21 Rand and 28 cents. Okay, are you with me? Are you happy? Okay, so these are just all way, ways of saying it. So if my unit, so okay, so let's go back. So because I have a 21 rand and 28 cents um, amount that was my unit price, when I sold 200 units, can you see the cost price that I'm going to account for is going to be my 28 rand, my 21 rand, 28 cents times my 2000 units so that is going to be what that's going to be my cost of sales amount okay that's what i'm going to account for in my cost of sales so now we've done the first in first out method we've done the weighted average method what is next you have now learned everything that you possibly can you can do some extra examples i will put some extra examples on next week so we can continue with that so you guys can get more familiar with um your inventory but let's have a look at my vehicle so my vehicles my fixed assets and then i want to talk about my internal control so i want to Oh, now we're done with inventory. I just quickly want to show you this question. And then this question also involves um, some controls, some control measures we might need to take into place. Um, and you will definitely get something like this. And then I want to talk about that um, in regards to inventory as well. OK, so let's quickly see. What did they ask me here? This is the question I, t I told you guys about. I was telling you guys about that um, everyone was asked this and they got frazzled. They didn't know what to do and they th thought they couldn't do it. So if you get something odd like this, just stay calm. You are going to be OK. So 
which one of the three vehicles should be traded in and why. Show your calculations by following the instructions below. You have to now calculate the percentage of earnings spent on fuel and repairs by each truck, and then you should also say which vehicle should be traded in and why. So let's have a look like at the question. Number two, so it says, there are three vehicles. There is truck A, truck B, truck C, and we use these trucks for deliver <coughs> Sorry. delivery purposes. Now, the cost, the running cost of the vehicles are as follows. We have our mileage traveled. Okay, each one traveled this amount during the year. We have our courier charges that we earn. So this is our income that we've earned. So obviously this um, truck travels and receive income from these travels. We have repairs and maintenance. OK, so we have our repairs and maintenance. Um, and we have our fuel and our oil. OK, so these are expenses and these are our income. OK, so here we can see what each one earned and what each one, um, what the expenses were. Now it says calculate the percentage of earnings spent on fuel and repairs. Now this is supposed to, accounting is so easy when you know how to read. OK, you need to know what you are reading and how everything is triggering what. So I will never, I think yesterday I told you with my tax lecturer that he always says, I always give you stuff for a reason and I'm always phrasing it a certain way. So there are certain things that you should keep in mind, okay? This basically gives away what you should do. It says calculate the percentage of earnings spent on fuel and repairs. So can you see that I need to put my repairs and my fuel expense on top of my earnings? Can you see it has nothing to do with these mileages traveled? I can ignore that. Do I need that? No. Why would I need that? I can, all I do is I then have to divide all of these and then times it by that again. That's a useless exercise. They're giving me the totals. This is only applicable and this only comes into play if I give you a, um, let's say like a five rand 40 and then you have to times it by your kilo kilometers. Then I had to say um, courier charges earned per kilometer. If I said per kilometer and I give you a per kilometer um, amount here, you then have to actually times it there. But now you don't have to because I'm giving you the, the full amount. So that's actually easy. Right, so let's see. What do you do? You say, okay, I'm going to say this is the repairs price and this is the fuel price. Now I'm adding deal and repairs percentage of earnings and I'm putting it on top of my earnings. Can you see? I'm working out a percentage and that gives me 28,3%. Now, I'm looking at my second truck and I'm seeing, OK, this is my 30,000 um, Rand plus my 180,000 Rand over my earnings, right? And I do the exact same thing with C. Then I get a percentage. Now, what does this percentage mean? Now, this is where your knowledge and your how you apply your knowledge comes in. So I need to make sure that you know what are you actually working out? So I have a figure. Great. We can all do math. We did math. OK, we did the math. We got the answer. What does this imply? And this is why CAs and um, CIPAs and so professional accountants and uh, CMA management accountants, all of those people get paid so much. That's why CFOs are so important to a company because they can actually analyze what the um, calculations mean. So I can easily give you the answer, but I need you to interpret the answer. And this is where accounting and metric is so, so, so important because 
they are now wanting you to apply your knowledge and seek if I do send you out in the business world, will you be able to apply your accounting knowledge? OK, what does that mean? That means that you need to be able to analyze and interpret what you are doing. So now we say, OK, can you see why is the uh, truck B circled? It is circled because it's the percentage earnings spent on fuel and repair. Now, why am I repeating it so slowly? Your earnings. So for every rand you are spending for truck B, almost 50% of your earnings you are spending on fuel and repairs. So can you see that the fuel and the repairs on this truck is so high that for every one rand I make, I have to pay fifth, uh, 50 cents that car. That's my expense. Do you see that? OK, so that's why B should be traded in. That's how you interpret it. Why? Because the maintenance and the fuel is too high. Can you see? That is why I need to interpret it because for every one rand income I make, I have to spend for 47 cents comma seven, so 48 cents on expenses. So I'm only pocketing. What would it be? 42, no? Teacher, is everything fine on your side? Your sound disappeared. In February 2016, at a price of 630,000 rand. At a price of 630,000 Rand. So that's a new vehicle's price. The new vehicle um, comes with a vehicle. 